almost all of the recommendations and findings of my visit uh, from 2015 remain valid. I have not seen any significant movement forward. Um, I see a disturbing focus on increasing the education of Roma uh, themselves without addressing patterns of segregation. Mm -hmm. um, so in other words, what can be done with teacher's assistance, with the flow of money, with uh, uh, zero classes, uh, but without addressing underlying patterns of segregation. Uh, spatial segregation, how to deal with white flight, uh, how to enforce court judgments, um, and, and how to prepare teachers to deal with diverse classes uh, uh, better. It was a very constructive discussion. Um, I think what was interesting for me is uh, to see uh, experts on the rights of personal disabilities and Roma rights experts in the same room talking about inclusive education. Um, because I think the patterns of segregation, uh, the vested interest in keeping children without disabilities, uh, ch Roma children out of mainstream schools are often very similar. Um, so I think they, they can find common cause. Um, I think that there was, uh, the most concrete thing was that these experts um, and NGOs and uh, official representatives uh, called themselves a knowledge platform and that they needed to get together um, uh, more regularly to share research with each other uh, and to work together to move forward. Uh, because what we have until now in this area is very much an ad hoc approach. You need, you need a comprehensive approach, you need a long-term vision, and you need coordination uh, between uh, different ministries and, and these ministries and civil society. Access to justice for, for various groups has become uh, quite the watchword, I think, not only for the Council of Europe, but for the EU and, and other bodies, because I think that people realize that uh, very often those groups that suffer most from discrimination um, don't trust institutions, don't know how to access their rights, um, and that special measures need to be taken to promote their access to, to, to justice. Um, and this concerns Roma, but it also concerns women, uh, various other uh, groups that are subject to discrimination, personal disabilities. So how to facilitate their access to justice, I think, is key. And, and here NGOs play an absolutely critical role, uh, because very often uh, these groups, Roma in particular, do not trust state institutions at all, don't know how to use, uh, access their rights uh, through those state institutions. So they need the assistance of experienced NGOs to do this. Well, one, one problem that I encountered here, which was quite disturbing actually, is uh, you have judgments about discrimination, about the desegregation of a school in the east of, uh, uh, of Slovakia, mm -hmm. about uh, discrimination on the basis of disability against a girl uh, in Bratislava, and these judgments cannot be enforced. Uh, no, there is no follow-up to judgment. Um, and, and to me, this, is, uh, this is ref reflects a, a deeper problem. Um, that you can have good litigation, but if there's no follow-up to good court judgment, it remains, uh, it remains at the level of words. And this, uh, and this holds true also for police brutality and, and uh, police misconduct. Uh, I think there are several things here. One is a discourse surrounding uh, security and, and Roma and, and kind of the stigmatization of, of entire vulnerable communities. Uh, the second is the impunity of police who have been engaged in misconduct that is well documented uh, and that have not been punished for this, but have rather been uh, awarded by politicians uh, for doing a good job. Uh, and that has to change. Uh, if that doesn't change, uh, there will never be trust between the Roma communities and, and police. I think that one of the biggest difficulties is keeping the issue of Roma inclusion and combating anti-Egyptian on the political agenda of member states when you had a whole series of different crises that pushed the issue of Roma rights um, off the agenda or at least off the top, uh, off, out of the rad out of, off the immediate radar screen of many politicians. Uh, you had movement, you had decades of Roma inclusion, you had the adoption of action plans and, and, and so on. And now that has all quieted down. Everybody's talking about migration, everybody's talking about terrorism, everybody's talking about uh, other things and not about how to promote the rights of the most vulnerable people uh, in Europe. 
And I think that, that has been a very difficult challenge, to keep this issue on the agenda. So we had to try to develop innovative ways to try to uh, keep the, the issue alive um, in, in the public eye. It was not easy. Uh, one thing that we did is we tried to address this uh, kind of epidemic of, of evictions all over Europe uh, facing uh, Roma um, and pointing out that this was highly problematic in terms of efforts at inclusion. How can you expect people to be integrated if they uh, if they're homeless, if their children are, can no longer go to school because they've been evic evicted, uh, if they lose contacts with, with the majority population that they had developed over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a problem that was everywhere. Um, another problem, I think, was media discourse. That over and over again, I found myself in the position of saying to media, this is not, um, you know, this is not the way you should portray uh, this issue. Um, and we did have some good examples. I remember going to Portugal uh, and we had embedded journalists within our team and went out to visit a project, uh, a, a successful project of a, of a Roma, Roma mediator working uh, with local community and, and, a, and a progressive, well-intentioned local government uh, that saw the benefit in doing this. Uh, and the journalists uh, were surprised. A good news story about Roma, uh, that Roma who, who cooperate with the authorities, who want to work, who want to go to school. Uh, and it, it, it was a very positive experience, I think, for everybody concerned that, oh, listen, uh, there are good examples. It's not all, uh, it's all, not all negative and, and a, a social problem that, that uh, we're a community that needs to be stigmatized. Uh, uh, so it was, it was a... There are ways to get around that, but it's, it takes a, a lot of effort. Um, I think the challenge going forward is, that, is to keep the Roma, uh, the Roma issue on the agenda to make sure that money coming from the EU is not misused. There's so much money flowing into countries with large Roma communities. It's often disused, uh, misused, um, and, and maint maintained segregation, uh, container schools, and, you know, um, and some s such things. Um, so I think the monitoring the money is going to be key in the future, keeping this issue on the agenda again, because we know that when it's on the agenda, we can move forward, um, and learning from others. And Slovakia has a huge, long ways to go, because uh, according to the FRA research, uh, there are more, uh, Roma are more segregated in, at school here than in any other uh, country with large Roma communities.